Compatibility, the show where the backward compatible crew and their guests tell improvised stories through role play games. Previously on the Eden program. But now you scanned me and my name came up. Please come with us. I duck and weave and flown through the ruins. The propaganda's a lie. There's no salvation in the process, only death. You conducted an illegal procedure in the old Alpha factory. Do you deny this? Yes. Finally, man, you're not telling us something. What did you just do, Fred? Uh, someone as young as you, probably not going to get a very wrong perception. Episode 4, The Devil Take It. Philemon has just finished a long series of exams. He has withdrawn blood. He has had you do palm scans. He has had you enter tubes full of gas. He has done just about everything short of hook you up to the scary looking hat. He now motions towards the scary-looking hat. (laughs) Oh, boy. I promise we won't activate it, he says. Is he lying? Is he lying? You want to test it? Okay. Yeah, I want to... I don't trust him right off the bat, first off. And, um... I'm going to define my edge now, my second edge. Go ahead. Whoever I was 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 a, a performer. So I know what to look for when someone's putting on a facade. Mm-hmm. So I have, uh, what would you call that? Bullshit detector. <laughs> yeah, good enough. It's pronounced uh, bullshitometer. Ah, yes, of course. So I'll have at least two cards. One success, two. You have two. No, he's not lying. Okay. He seems scared, uh, nervous, frustrated, angry, but not at you. Um, every time he gets a test, this doesn't make sense, he keeps saying. And Aren't some you? of the others who are here are also looking over his, his shoulder and saying, but but you're going to have to do a scan. We won't know conclusively until you do the scan. What kind of scan are you doing? It's... It's part of the integration it's a, process. It's, it's a partial upload without disintegration. Basically, it's going to allow us to... Uh, compare the scan we did before you guys left uh, this morning, yesterday, and uh, to, to your current, and just make sure you guys are still who you say you are. All I know is that when we were inside the uh, initial facility, we saw um, old men with the helmets on, or at least one of them with the helmet on, and he was dead. Yeah, this, so, this helmet is attached to a device that looks exactly yeah, like I the don't, thing you saw. I don't want to put this helmet on my head and end up the same way. Well, you have to understand, whenever you did that, that, that was for a partial... Well, it was for a complete upload without disintegration. So, Excuse um, me, whenever we did that? Yeah. There were only three bodies. We took turns. You, you have to understand... Well, see, we didn't hear that part, was what I was... <sighs> Sir, your your theories that you set out to prove can't be true. We've all established that. The three of My you, theories? Of course. What what theory is that? See, you're... Uh, you don't know your own theories. This is maddening. How can you not know your own theories? Well, I could know my own theories if you tell me. Sir, you invented the process. Put and, me in the machine. And then I forgot it. You can't forget it. When the upload continued into your new form, you you wouldn't be walking and talking if you hadn't downloaded your, your, your consciousness, your personality, and your intelligence into the body you're in now. Well, apparently there was a problem with the process, and some of the memories didn't go. Then you, 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 you couldn't be walking and talking and speaking to me. And yet here I am. And yet you don't remember. Exactly. None of it makes sense. Scan me. So we're going to scan you. Scan me. Okay, he scan He puts Fred. the hat on your scan head Fred. really hard. <laughs> Ow! 
You said it wouldn't hurt. Hey, watch yourself there, old man. You're one to talk. And, and yes, he is about 65, um, <laughs> but he would have been still younger than the old men you saw. Right. Uh, but in the were apparently... Three. You guys? I don't know. Whatever. Listen, you're... You're obviously not going to believe me, so maybe you'll believe yourself. And he reaches over and he um, he punches a button. Now the tech here isn't quite as advanced as the tech in the city. It's like old school monitors, some some LCD stuff, that kind of mm-hmm. thing. So he, he literally types it up. It's like laser disc. And yeah, it, it, he, you see the the hard drive kind of spin up, and, and there it is. Um, and then uh, while he's doing his thing, and the little lights are, are progressing, um, it it actually says loading. <laughs> Uh, and there's a loading bar. You can tell this thing was botched together, um, clearly by somebody who sort of made their own mind probe detector thing. Right. Um, probably. Yeah. Probably. Was it probably me? <laughs> makes um, sense. If what he's saying is true. But I'm still not. This isn't triggering any memory. Seeing this no, or none whatsoever. You pop. Uh, it pops up on the screen, and there, there is um, a, the old man that you saw um, laying dead on the desk and now that you've been told it's you you can see it um, the man who's stared back at you in the reflection of the truck mirror uh, something in the eyes is yeah I mean the, 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 the nose is a little bigger the ears stick out a little more uh, he's hairy but no it, it this guy's got your face just like 50 years older it's weird um but I don't remember making the recording you don't remember making the recording and he says if I'm right you won't remember making this recording but let me just say happy birthday these bozos probably won't think it's worked they're gonna have to scan you just to make sure that it is see I know it's me because we both think that they're bozos but uh you see I'm a genocidal maniac not on purpose, mind you. But my own arrogance and stupidity has caused this whole thing. You see, when you walk into a pod and you're disintegrated, guess what? You die. Dead. Gone. Did I mention dead? And, uh, when you save and download, two things are happening. Your soul is destroyed. And you become data. And the second thing is, the new version of you, the one that looks like you and talks like you, the one that is you, looking at me, looking at you, well, you're a new person. You got your own soul in there, if I'm right. So, if we stop the download from overriding you, well, I suppose it won't kill you. So all these people, these fine folks, these citizens in the city and those blasted into space, well, guess what? They're not real. They're copies. They're dead. And the new versions, the ones that get printed, well, they might have been alive when they were made. But the instant that new personality overwrites, they're dead too. We're a civilization of darn zombies. Have a nice day. Oh, and uh, enjoy your new life. So how can he be sure that they don't have souls either, like the new people? How does he know that part? Well, what he implied was that you have a soul and you are your own individual. Right, but everyone else. And that when the memories of the old disintegrated person are downloaded into you, it overwrites your soul. Right. Causing you to be an empty shell with just data. Data that looks, talks, and acts like a human. Yeah, a soulless human. So if it looks, talks, and acts the same way, then how is that any different? That's a great question. You say that to find... Uh, I'm no, saying no. it out loud, yes. Well, that is the question, isn't it? Um, did I leave a message for myself, or what? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, uh, 
Freddie, you're you're just a rocker. I mean, I, I only kept you around because I thought your music was really cool. I thought I saw myself in the background of your one making faces. Sorry, Freddie, you're just a hippie that joined our, joined my cause. At least I have money. I'm making this up, by the way. You're, I don't you're, remember. You're anything. here with conservation, and you joined up. Yeah. So. Um, no, I. Um, Fi- Fine Lehman has finished the scan, and he stands awestruck, dumbfounded. What'd you find? Uh. Is, is there anything wrong? These scans don't match. So, Job was right. You are not Freddie Black. I look like him. Uh, genetically, you are him. But I'm a different but he's, person. he's his own person. You... That's gonna get... I don't know how you uh, can be standing here uh, coherent and continent, quite frankly. Well, don't this... try to understand. Just... Except this blasts away everything that that we know. Um, you get to be an expert in it now. That we thought we knew. Um, I, I'm gonna have to conduct more tests. <sighs> Isn't this conclusive enough? You you guys make yourselves comfortable. Um, we're we're gonna be here a while. <laughs> How many more tests do we? Can need I get to you run? some food or some plants just- or some, and then. We're never going to get those nachos, friends. No, we're not. <laughs> What's the quickest way out of here? Because I don't think I want to stay here anymore. What's going on? And he goes over and he hits a panel on the wall, like a big button with a big My speaker. old self was right. These guys aren't bozos. And the old man's voice that comes through says, It's security! I don't know how, but they found us! They found us! Okay, escape route. Escape route? Did we build an escape route? This way! You've spent the night in uh, a less than comfortable cell. I mean, I, mean, I can handle it. Every now and then, uh, Fy Lehman has checked on you. He sounds more agitated every time. Um, these guys have been able to patch through and talk to you from time to time, describing to you what the other one is having done to them, because there's only one device mm-hmm. of each type. Um, so you're pretty much caught up on what's occurred. Um, glad that they didn't blow themselves up, or maybe you're not. I don't know. What do you intend to do? If I've been in here a while, I'm going to try to get out. Okay. There's really nothing else I can do. So first, I'm just going to try the door. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it's locked. Okay. I'm going to look around the room, see if there's any way out. Okay. I'm triggering professional engineering and fuzzy logic. Okay. I would also like to get any help that Philemon can give me. Nice. I have two successes. I have three. Wow, very nice. Yeah, as it happens, um, everything here is magnetically controlled. So describe how that plays to your favor. Philemon, what um, what kind of a carrier wave are we using here? Like, how are you talking to me? He describes it in detail. Um, A lot of it sounds like uh, techno jargon that you do not know and understand. But basically, it's still kind of... (laughs) Um, induced radio waves. Uh, that's kind of a simple way to put it, but okay. Where's the receiver? Well, uh, it's it's a nanoparticle embedded within your ear canal, and um, of course, you also have some in your uh, eye receptors. But all right, I'm hearing you as you hear yourself. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt me a lot. Um, I'm gonna stand really close to the lock. And I need you to pipe as much white noise as you can into my receiver. Um, is that wise? No, it is not. But if I'm right, which, I mean, obviously I am, um, it will interfere with the magnetic lock and it'll just slide open. If you say so, sir. No. And I will probably also fall through it. But a eh, little bit of this, a little bit of that. All right, you give it a whirl. I lean in. Searing pain through eye and ear. Just searing, high-pitched yep. squeal, white over my eye. There's a click and the door just slides like gravity pulls it open. And I stumble into the corridor. Yep, you're out. Looking around. Can you, um, if I leave me, can you give me a kind of a guide on the way to get out of here? Because I've, I, it kind of took me straight here. I didn't see most of this complex. No response. Right. I am going to... Start moving immediately. Um, this place looks like a jail, right? Actually, no. It doesn't? No, it really doesn't. It looks like a 
corporate headquarters, and you were locked in somebody's office. Cool. Yeah, it was basically glass. Uh, it was an empty office, but I mean, it, it had a desk and there was nothing in there. I mean, but yeah, I mean, it was it was a a basement office, so it's, it's kind of like you know where a grunt would work. But you're essentially in a what appears to be massive, enormous corporate headquarters. I'm going to find the loading dock. Cool. I'm going to kind of slink through the, basically taking service stairs, things like that. Mm-hmm. Find a loading dock and jump onto the back of a truck. Um, yeah, uh, this whole process down here appears to be automated. There's not even a person down there. So you do this without any any errors. I, I cool. Not even make a test for it. Awesome. You have the time to do it slow. You guys are running along the edge of basically a railway. It's an exterior railway here in the canyon um, that is connected to this cave. Mm. And what you see is what look like quadcopters, and they appear to have guns mounted on them. Drones? And they're, yeah, they're drones, and they're flying through the canyon, um, and you see old folks dying left and right, getting shot left and right, screaming, bleeding. What do we know about these drones? Like, is there a way to disable hack? You're the hacker. You do hacking things. Yeah, is there, are there any terminals around here? Can we disable these? Yeah, there's computers around here. All right, I, I go over there to disable like the uh, with the, the, the whatever. Okay, you're gonna try to run interference or something. Yes. To make them so make them so that they're they're not shooting at us anymore. There's okay. probably they're a drone operator. Else. If there is a drone operator, that'd be great. But I have to see what I can get into once I get into the machine. I gotta splice it first. I'm gonna I'll look for the operator. You try to stop the drones directly. Via via the computer system. Yes. Yeah. Hold on. So I got three plus. I'm using hacking. I'm gonna use a fine eye for detail. How to many try. cards are you playing? I'm playing two. Two. I'm going to go ahead and use one of my fan mail, too, because I don't trust the cards in my hand. One success. One success. Two. And that was crucial, because that was one of the last ones. Nice. So I, I wouldn't have gotten it otherwise. Okay. Well, I get this back as budget, but it looks like you get to narrate uh, And we Black. succeeded. Yeah, so there, there are tons of copters, and you don't find a terminal, you find a chaff grenade. Do you know what that is? Oh, 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 okay. Yes. Do you know what that is? Okay. Chaff grenades, um, they aren't designed to kill people. They have tiny, basically, ribbons of... Uh, foil, metal, stuff that just gets thrown up in the air and oh. block radio signals. Okay. So I don't, you, what does that have to do with hacking, though? You pop it, the drones go nuts because they don't get any signal whatsoever and they just drop out of the sky. Yeah. It, it lasts. It doesn't last very long because we're in an open space, kind of, but that gives me enough time to find the guy hiding by the rock trying to make his radio controls work. Well, these things are fragile enough. Also, that uh, whenever they hit the rock, they turn not going back up. Yeah, uh, so while he's trying to get his thing to work, I sucker punch him out. Nice, very nice. Uh, yeah, he was wearing full uh, like uh, SWAT-type armor. He apparently repelled in, um, and you can actually glimpse his like his, his truck up there um, in kind of an out, outcropping. In. Mm-hmm. So, um, and now we know he's not a robot, because if he was, he would have broken your hand. Yeah. The, the, there's still mild chaos, but it's not from from dying and, and, and or shooting and dying. It's from I've been shot and dying. Um, mm. You you run around a little frantically trying to, to figure out what happened to Philemon. Oh no, Philemon! Because we can't hear him. You, yeah, you, you, we haven't seen. We can't see him. You right. can't see him and hear him. You can hear him. You heard his conversation with Philemon. Apparently, he was um, frantically trying to do something with with, with static and, and something. And Jim. the last words you hear are, um, "I'm going to patch you guys through." Um, they, they're coming. And then it went it went silent. Wasn't he with us when we were escaping? Yeah, he was. Yes, he we was. got separated. We need to we need to keep going. Okay. Wanna we take have, this guy's truck? Do we have is there a truck? Well you'll have to get up there. Yeah, well he's got repelling equipment. There there is repelling equipment. Yeah, I mean, you'll be able to climb up there. But there's also dying old wounded people. If you care about them. Yeah, well, well, I mean we're we're not doctors. And how there's are we so supposed, many of them. Yeah, how are we supposed to help them though? Um, as you round the corner, you find Philemon. Oh, there we go. He's okay. bleeding out. Oh, no. All right, let's... He coughs up blood, <laughs> mm-hmm. and he says to you, One more test. <laughs> <laughs> I, he says, I was wrong. <laughs> I understand now. You have to get the data. Get it to the central broadcasting unit. Let everyone know what we now know. Where is it? Is Corporate. It? So we have to go back into the city and get into the main corporate. We have to go where James is. There's no Central. other way. Is there any way that we can transfer information via the um, 
yeah. the uplink that you had so with James. <laughs> you, you can do more than that. The, the device. He, he grabs Black. He grabs you by the shoulder. Um, there's a bloody handprint now on your shoulder. Oh my hoodie! But but he grabs you and he says, "You, you can upload yourself, transmit to the factory. It's still operational." You'll retain everything if you do it right. The overrides uh, aren't disabled. You will appear there just as you are now, and you'll be back in the city. Yeah, but we've proven that he won't appear there. It'll be someone else that just has his memories. No, that can't be true. If that's true, then I'm not me. Well... I'm, I hate to break it to you, but that's what the data suggests. I mean, you're the one that ran all the tests. You're going to deny your own tests? It, it, it doesn't make any sense. And he closes his eyes, and he's gone. Let's do it anyway. I put the helmet on. You're going? <laughs> I'll go that way. You take the truck. Are you sure you want to do this, Freddy? Yeah. I didn't get to leave myself a message, so... There's nothing. There, I don't have a past version of myself telling me not to do it, so I figure it's okay. All right, Freddy, <laughs> rock on, and I give him a fist. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, <laughs> <laughs> so do we each get like a copy of the data? Yeah, I, I assume we can both have copies, right? Of what? It's, it's just data of of the information that we're trying to send out to the corporate. Well, yeah, but you don't have the copy of that information. You've got you've got the pre-recorded message that. He showed you, right? But you don't have the pre-recorded message that he was shown, and that was edited. Yeah. It, so it, wait, what does he want to? Sh- uh, what is? What did he want us to show at corporate? Then I thought it was the stuff that he showed. That's me. a really good question. So he wasn't specific about what he wanted to show. No, he wasn't. You're gonna have to figure it out. <laughs> well, what we need is all of his, all of the data from his test that he just took on us. But where did he keep all that? Because that's what he wants to show. Because that's what proved. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna interject. You okay. can because you're yes, all connected. Yes, you can. During their um, conversation with me, uh, they showed a video that supposedly you left them with a bunch of data that they cut out for my viewing. So it's here or there. I'm not there anymore. Mm. We need to get there. We need wait. So maybe you should stay. The there. data is there. We have to. We have to get the data. The data is with right. you, apparently. It's not with me. It's at corporate. But they have it. I know because I've seen it. Well, I've seen up to it. Well, we can't just, like, break into corporate, essentially. I just broke out. We have a truck. We do have a truck. One of theirs. Right. We can just go in, essentially, and pretend like we're one of their troopers. We can take... We can wear that guy's uh, little trooper armor, the one that you sucker punched. Maybe the truck's automated and it just runs on. They're like, oh, go home now. Yeah. We go... I, I go in the truck and I check it out to see if it's... Am can I... We, can am we get I to the yeah, truck? absolutely. Wait, did you... Did you... You haven't downloaded yet. No, I, I got the helmet on. I was like... But you decided not do, to... Do I need to do this? Even though we shared that fist bump moment? Yeah. You were like, like, I don't know about this. We can take that back. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, is... So... It, can I wear that guy's armor suit thing? Yeah. So that I can pretend like I'm one of the workers? Yeah. Okay, so I, I do that. I'm wearing his, like, clothing. Done. Yeah, I bet his belt has, like, a special winch for the repelling. Yeah. But how are you getting up? Are you just going to hold on to me or something? Or you could probably just pull me, pull us up if it's got a winch on it from the truck, right? You just reverse it? What did Philey mean by going back to the factory? Uh, exactly. Well, he meant the factory that we came from. Yeah, I know. Maybe there's the data. Maybe the data is on the factory. But he said, like, the, the processes for reintegration there were still turned on. Um, and the, 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 the hat, the funny-looking hat, if you will... Um, he said before that he wasn't going to do a full upload, and he didn't. Right. But you certainly can. You can do a full upload, mm-hmm. transmit the data wirelessly back to the factory, and you will um, print yourself out anew in the place where you started. Uh, because those three chairs were still fine. Yeah, you'll be there. It, won't, it just won't be you. It'll be a copy of you. And you'll die here. As we've learned from the data. I can just leave myself a message. Well, you actually can't leave yourself a message because there's no way to leave the message. We have nothing to record you with here. The difference is this time, your memories will be uploaded. Right. Well, but only these memories, not the memories from before. And downloaded into the new version of you, overriding whatever personality or soul would have emerged. Will you kill two people to save, like, a few hours' drive? 
<laughs> That's so metal. <laughs> uh, but I don't think it's the right kind of metal at this point. Road trip, Freddy. Let's just do it. Okay. I think we can. I think we can do it. We can get in the truck. We can um, probably, you know, they have some sort of uh, computerized system on there that will, will show us where to go anyway. We the only problem, back. only problem is they expect this guy to kill everyone here mm -hmm. and then report back saying, "Yep, it's all done." That's what we'll do. Where are your drones? Mm -hmm. Where? I point to the smoldering wreckage. We have some losses. I hope you're a good liar. And I climb up with him, with the winch. Or... I'm, I'm definitely a good liar. Okay. I could be lying Do about I, that. Though. Yeah. All right. So you winch your guy self up to the truck. Yes. You get in. Um, it is extremely high tech, very gloss black. Mm -hmm. um, automated. Yeah, highly automated. But there is one of those hand scanners. I go back down, pick up the guy, bring him with us. No, we can just, we just need his hand. Oh, dear. Yeah, I don't want to be evil. <laughs> We're not evil. We're trying to save the world here. Yeah, well, we get labeled as a terrorist. And I've, I've already... Those hands off. Look, my past self left me a message that said that I'm a genocidal maniac. So, yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah, that was an... Uh, okay. You cut off the hand then. <laughs> I'm just going to turn away and pretend I didn't notice. Wait, how am I cutting it off? Um, Do we need the whole hand? Are we, able to, are we able to take his whole body up there? It seems. Yeah, you can winch him up there. With all of us? Yeah. All right, I guess we'll try that. He's in his good. underwear if that doesn't bug you. So he probably has zip ties, though. So you use his hand mm -hmm. on the steering wheel. Okay, yeah, the, the car lights up, and um, a computerized voice says, Destination. Corporate. Headquarters. He headquarters, yeah. Please fasten your seatbelt. Yeah, the, the, the truck begins its way. Uh, down the mountain and some kind of other path. Meanwhile, where do you guys want to meet? We're heading for corporate. I have to head back to corporate then. Yeah. Where's this truck taking me? Well, it's a delivery truck, so your, right best, your best guess would be it's going to make its rounds. That could take a while. As soon as we're a little bit of a ways from, I'm going to bail off. And I'm going to hang out in the area. And when it comes back, I'm going to jump back on it. Cool. Well, standing around, you discover that every 10 or 15 minutes, a truck comes by, going one way and then the other. Um, so whatever the business is that this thing is doing, it's, it's doing it. Also, you notice that these particular trucks don't seem to be um, run by fuel. They actually are... Electrical, solar, you'd guess. Nice. More like a giant drone than a proper truck. Hmm. Well, you found an easy way into the factory or the corporate office or whatever. Mailroom. It always works, guys. That's probably our. That's probably a better idea. We should once we're close to corporate, we get out, find him, and then take his entrance. Because going through the guard entrance, we're going to pass by security checkpoints. What I was thinking was, I can override the. Um, see if I can hack into the computer in this thing. And have it set to auto drive, like just straight into the building. <laughs> and through and the wall. We, we jump out, so the truck goes in, causes a major, you know, distraction, and then we sneak in via the delivery area. Let's okay. see if it happens. Let me ask you this Does this also count as covert? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait I have three, and then I have hacker and covert. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and use a fan mail too, because this is pretty okay, crucial. Four? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Should I use another fan mail as well? Yeah. Use another fan mail. I think so too. I've got two successes. So I've got uh, three successes. Um, so yeah, um, I think you had the high card there, so go ahead and narrate it. Um, we're in the I'm, I'm in the truck, driving the truck. Um, I managed to hack into the, into the um, automated system and program it so that it just keeps driving straight into the guard um, area where you know it's, it's planning to drive anyway. It's just going to accelerate faster and faster as it goes past the checkpoint. Um, I have it set up so that we're able to actually stop the vehicle and get out and I can I can you know I can I can tell it to start via voice command once we get out mm -hmm. and being really fancy there was a slight oversight as it starts barreling forward um we forgot that we still had the guy the guard inside Oops. and he's not dead you just sucker punched him so you were gonna cough his hand well <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> and those th that thing it looked tough well look here's the thing you didn't actually punch him as hard as you thought because as the the truck is barreling towards the factory he wakes up. 
and he starts looking around. He has the zip ties because he tied him up and he's like, what's going on? And then he just, you know, the whole thing blows up into a massive fireball. Meanwhile, we are have met up back with uh, James Jefferson and uh, we do the whole delivery truck plan where we jump on the back and go right into the factory. And all the guards are completely distracted and worried about the giant explosion over there, whichever guards survived that giant explosion, by the way. Um, so everyone's worried about that. They probably have some sort of rescue teams trying to get people out from that from that area. So we have a pretty much completely open shot to get into the building. Well, guys, how does it uh, how does it feel to actually be terrorists like the guys before us? Uh, I was about to die already, so I don't really have much frame of reference. But uh, it seems like we're winning. So, man, you guys got your past selves to leave messages. I didn't get anything. You make your way. To you, you the central the computer room. core, um, it is a massive five-story tall tower of computer. Mm. Um, it it becomes clear to you instantly why the old Alpha factory was abandoned. This is the place where civilizations' memories, the the minds of the citizens of this city, are stored, and you imagine in your mind's eye. A building like this and a tower computer like this in every major city in the world. And you just know instinctively that it's true. And it's our fault. And you also imagine a similar thing encased in radioactive proof casing shooting its way through space towards some unknown star copied again and again and again and again. As the New Eden Project, as they called it, shot the memories and nothing else, no flesh, into space. The data of humanity, the data that is humanity, stored here. And the horror of the death that that represents... And not only the death of those who sacrifice themselves to become that data, but the death of those that would be implied in overriding a new, fresh mind with that data. Hundred billion times over. Just leaves you sick to your very empty stomach. Not me. I'm angry. What do you do? He said we can upload our findings the, the the data we left behind to prove that this is wrong right the video you had yeah we've got the data now right we have to get it from this building okay where where did you see it in the interrogation room but i imagine they have a full copy in their archive somewhere is there, in the computer hold on is there a terminal in this room absolutely i'm gonna try to hack the terminal there's dozens of terminals all right well, i'm gonna try to hack the terminal see if i can get into the main the main database and access this information see if, it. see if it's all hooked up in the cloud if you fail, I'm going to upload my mind as proof. I don't, but it needs to be more than that, I think, doesn't it? Oh, you're right, yeah, if your body, if, but we have to record that, record that happening with you, I guess. Essentially making a new video, that maybe... You get to live behind a video appointment! That might work, Freddy. It's all I'm good for. You left behind music. But it's not me. I'm not Freddy anymore. Alright. I'm not going to make this easy on you guys. I'm give you a fan mail. So you're going to spend your fan mail to give him him a a card. As am I. Okay. Okay. Should should I also spend this one? How many cards do you have? Five. Yeah, do it. Oh, wow, yeah. I'm going to have to, I think. This this is a big budget scene. This is a huge budget scene. Three successes. I have one success from uh, these cards. All right. So you get one. That converts this into budget. And two, three, four. There you go. (sighs) How many did you have? Three. Oh, wow, that was close. But you've got an ace over there, so yeah. narrate it for us. Describe what happens. Take us out. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. When you get it, all the monitors. Yeah! In this room. Okay. Um, I'm able to hack into the, the main system and access uh, the, the database for the entire complex. There's an encrypted file hidden away, but your, mm-hmm. your skill stealthily brings it out. I pull it out, and um, I have I end up you know replaying it on all the monitors in here. Um, and get all the information so that we can... I guess we're going to broadcast it. We can broadcast it right from here. You can do it right now. Yeah, we can broadcast it right from here. 
You're so. doing more than just broadcasting it. Mm-hmm. You are you're inner casting it and right. outer casting. Do the whole like eye ear thing? Well, yeah. I mean, literally every human is going to be able to see it on whatever flat surface they're looking right. at oh, like that's the enabled. Eyes. Right. But also the uploaded minds in no oh, no in the computers. Short of the ones being shot out into space, though technically you could send a message. Won't get there very. The well. ones that have have no physical body right now mm-hmm. can still get the message. All of humanity simultaneously, short of those who were never saved, right, will be able to. That's fine. That's they this should. Message. They should. I want everyone to to receive the message, and I'll, you know, if um, I'll I'll also send it out into space. But I, obviously, they won't be able to hear it for a while. I feel that everyone need, deserves to know. So, guys, everyone now that uh, we've revealed like the horrible truth of all of this. Yes. Uh, what's your bet on the entire world going down in anarchy and chaos? Behind you, on every monitor, you hear. Uh, I suppose I need no introduction. When I created the Eden program, my vision was to create a utopia, perfection on Earth. I am recording this message to state unequivocally that that vision has failed. The Eden program is not what the company tells you. The propaganda is a lie. There's no salvation in the process, only death. Death. The following images are everything you need to conclusively prove this. However, I know that for most of you, this will not be enough. This is why we've done what we did. The message will now serve as my last will and testament, and the others will be the final proof that we need. All my remaining worldly assets will be given to my genetic heir. I only hope that history will remember us kindly and forgive us. And then a massive stream of visual data follows. Uh, while you were in there, you discovered that they had doctored the file, mm-hmm. but you found the original, the uncorrupted one. And suddenly, almost as if through some kind of unexplained link, you hear the horror of all humanity screaming digitally in your ears. You know it's imagined, or is it? Mm. Stop right there. You're completely surrounded. Man, I was expecting. You move we fire on every level of the platform guns pointing down at you Um, from the door you came in SWAT team with massive shields Mm -hmm. and out from behind steps a woman um, in her early 20s wearing black leather cat suit and she says now you've done it next time on the Eden program you made humanity immortal. And that was a mistake. He's only going to let us do what he wants. I mean, if we're going to die anyway. So much. many questions that need to be answered. We can't help how we're made. Information can be frightening, but that doesn't make it any less true. She screams as she's incinerated. It's been great, guys, but uh, go to the console. Do your hacking magic. There's really only room for one of us. This has been Roll With It, a production of BackwardCompatible.com. The Game Master for the Eden Program is Adam Doc Bracken, writing Primetime Adventures by Matt Wilson of Dog Eared Designs. Freddie Black is played by Brian McKittrick. James Jefferson is played by Will Parsons. And Job Stevens is played by Jim Weaver. Your producer is Chris Krueger. For the Backward Compatible Crew, thank you for listening.